Going beyond single gene function and analyzing gene regulatory networks requires multiple mutations in a single animal. In this system, we optimize the amount of data generated from a single tissue to correlate genetic mutations with morphologic and expression profiles. This is achieved by first injecting lipophilic dye to visualize several discrete neuronal populations. In situ hybridization is performed to visualize the spatial temporal pattern of gene transcripts, while immunohistochemistry reflects specific patterns of protein expression. The added dimension of histological sectioning contributes to phenotype characterization. Combined, this experimental system affords the ability to analyze several different histologically recognizable structures as well as gene and protein expression, all from the same specimen, in both whole-mounted and sectioned preparations. We devise a system that combines lipophilic dye tracing, in C2 hybridization, immunohistochemistry, and histology. This technique maximizes information gained from a single specimen while correlating morphology with gene and protein expression. For all tissue dissections and manipulations, fix the animals in 4% paraformaldehyde in 0.1 molar phosphate buffer by transcardial perfusion using peristaltic pumps with appropriately sized needles. Since the dyes are photosensitive, store them in a dark closed compartment and, to avoid cross-contamination, designate a separate set of instruments to handle each dye. Under a dissecting microscope, determine a dye application site to selectively label the neuronal population under consideration and not other extraneous structures. Extract extraneous tissue in order to visually confirm the chosen site and access for placement of the dye. Now cut the preloaded NeuroView dye filter strips into appropriately sized triangular pieces with micro scissors. Be sure to cut as small of a piece as possible to avoid labeling other structures. For insertion into soft tissue such as brain, directly insert the filter using a point of the filter triangle to pierce the tissue. For more rigid tissues, make an incision to allow easier insertion of the dye. Do not use a dissecting needle to push the filter into the tissue. Place the specimens in a securely closed vial with 4% paraformaldehyde and incubate at 36 degrees Celsius in the dark for 2 to 14 days depending on age and diffusion distance to be covered. Using a dissecting scope with epifluorescence, verify that the dye has diffused to the desired location and dissect out the tissue of interest. Hole mount the specimen onto a slide with glycerol for imaging with a confocal microscope. After imaging lipophilic dyes on the confocal, transfer samples to a 2 mL RNAs free Eppendorf tube with RNAs free PBS to rinse off the glycerol. Systematically process the samples through dehydration and rehydration with a graded methanol series at 4 degrees Celsius. Start with an incubation in 100% methanol for at least an hour and work down to 25% methanol for 15 minutes. Wash three times in one times PBS for five minutes each. Digest the tissue with two microliters of 20 milligrams per milliliter stock proteinase K in two milliliters of fresh PBS. Monitor the digestion reaction by the change in tissue opacity from opaque to almost clear. In order to stop the enzyme digestion, Incubate the samples in 4% paraformaldehyde for 5 minutes. Then, wash with PBS once for 1 minute, followed by 3 5 minute washes. Discard the final PBS wash, paying special attention to eliminate as much as possible. As a prehybridization step, Incubate samples in 1.8 milliliters of hybridization mix 
for one hour at 60 degrees Celsius on an inverter. Denature salmon sperm DNA by incubation at 85 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes and set on ice. Add 200 microliters of denatured single-stranded DNA and approximately 100 nanograms of DIG labeled riboprobe to each sample and hybridize overnight at 60 degrees Celsius in a hybridization oven. Process the samples with three 10-minute washes of 2 times SSC at 60 degrees Celsius in the hybridization oven. Importantly, remove any endogenous alkaline phosphatase activity with a wash of 2 times SSC for 60 minutes at 70 degrees Celsius in an ISO temp heat block. Wash the samples with PBS for 5 minutes. Now, replace the PBS and add 1 microliter of 10 mg per milliliter RNAs A and incubate for 60 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius in an ISO temp heat block. Discard the PBS RNAs A and wash 3 times in wash solution for 10 minutes each. Finally, heat inactivate any remaining RNAs A by incubation for 60 minutes at 70 degrees Celsius in an ISO temp heat block. The final step is to visualize the riboprobe. Incubate samples in one times block buffer for one hour. Discard the block buffer and add two milliliters of block buffer containing one microliter of anti-ditch antibody to each sample. Incubate overnight. Wash several times with one times wash buffer as indicated. Then, incubate the samples in one times wash buffer overnight. Rinse the samples with one times detection buffer for 10 minutes and transfer the samples to a well plate. Discard the buffer and develop color with BM Purple. Since BM Purple is light sensitive, cover with foil or a box. When the desired signal strength is obtained, rinse the samples with one times detection buffer in the wells for 5 minutes. Image the samples with transmission microscopy or store them in 4% paraformaldehyde at 4 degrees Celsius. Rid the tissue of lipophilic dyes with a graded ethanol series if needed. Then, rehydrate the tissue by incrementally adding PBS over 5 to 10 minutes. Now, block the tissue for 1 hour in 2.5% normal goat serum and 0.5% Triton X100 at room temperature on a shaker. Incubate with primary antibody diluted in block solution for 48 hours at 4 degrees Celsius on a shaker. Wash three times with PBS for one hour each. Block the samples again. Then incubate with fluorescent conjugated secondary antibody diluted in block solution for 12 to 24 hours at 4 degrees Celsius on a shaker. From this point forward, care should be taken to block light from the sample as the secondary antibody is light sensitive. Again, wash the samples three times with PBS for one hour each. Finally, analyze the specimens by imaging with epifluorescent and confocal microscopy. Epoxy embedding and sectioning requires fixation of tissue in 2.5% glutaraldehyde, 1% PFA, in 0.1 molar phosphate buffer, usually overnight. In a glass sample vial, dehydrate the tissue with graded ethanol incubations. Now, to transition to solvents, incubate in 1 to 1 absolute ethanol to propylene oxide for 5 minutes followed by five 10-minute washes in propylene oxide only.
Infiltrate the sample with resin with a simple incubation in 1 to 1 propylene oxide to resin overnight on a shaker. Pour the solution with the sample into a flat embedding mold and leave on the counter for 4 to 6 hours to evaporate the propylene oxide. Transfer the samples to 100% resin for 4 hours. In the final mold, embed the samples in resin and place a label. Allow the resin to polymerize by incubating at 60 degrees Celsius for 24 to 48 hours. In order to minimize extraneous resin, carve the resin block with a razor blade as needed. On an ultra microtome, cut 1 to 2 micron serial sections. Mount and image the samples using transmission and epifluorescent microscopy. Different wavelength lipophilic dyes can facilitate the visualization of central projections of three different cranial nerves. Here, lipophilic dye is placed into the peripheral portions of the trigeminal, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves. After incubation for dye diffusion, the nerve central processes to the brainstem are visualized by brightfield microscopy. When the hindbrain is dissected and flat mounted, some labeling of the central processes of the three labeled nerves are clearly evident under brightfield microscopy. The confocal microscope allows dimensionality where specific neurons are illuminated and the use of three different dyes allows for the assessment of the distribution of each population in relation to the others. Here, the inner ear afferents are traced in a newborn mouse by NeuroView Red, in situ hybridization for PROX1, and a combination of immunoreactivity to antitubulin and antiprox1 to visualize the afferents. In addition, a 2 micron thick epoxy resin section images the cochlea as a cross section. When attempting this procedure, it is important to carefully choose the placement of the lipophilic dye. A good understanding of neuroanatomy will help in this process. Also, be cautious of all photosensitive steps. This procedure will reduce the amount of reading and thus time needed to obtain publishable data while improving information about colocalization and correlative effects in mutants.